make beautiful, fancy, home-baked bread on a long winter day with no kneading required. Yes, no kneading. This may be the easiest bread recipe you've ever made. We've got Heather Smith here with Orson Gigi to share this wonderful recipe. And we were just talking, there's no kneading required in this. So what's the trade-off? How do you get that? pockety bread effect on the inside. So I feel like uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, some amazing woman decided, I'm just gonna take my aggression now and start kneading this bread. And then she came up with some fantastic bread. And so from then on, kneading was always required. But sometimes it can be a little daunting. And so I think I feel like, you know, years and years before we could even imagine, bread was made using this method because you're naturally taking a small amount of yeast, flour, and water, and you're allowing the, those ingredients to do what they're supposed to do. And that is? create beautiful bread. <laughs> and so what it's doing is creating this gluten structure that's giving it its form and also it's creating these beautiful air pockets. As the yeast is developing in it, it creates carbon dioxide in, and that's what it's creating these little pockets. And so as you let your dough sit and rest, it's allowing these things to work um, naturally. And so when you're kneading your bread, you're forcing these things to happen. Not that it's a bad thing, but when you're allowing it to sit and, because we let, we let our dough rest for 12 to 18 hours, um, it's allowing it to naturally do these so things. So that's the time frame, you just let it sit for 12 days. Yep, hours. yep, and you're, you develop the most amazing flavors and things like that that you can achieve from naturally kneading your bread. And so this is kind of like taking it back to the grassroots of bread making. Yes. But in the 2006, um, New York Times posted this recipe and it still to this day, like their most pinned most popular recipe they've ever done because it kind of gave everyone the courage to like, oh, I can make bread now because he shows how simple it is, simple ingredients. I mean, you're really like 40 to 50 cents in, in materials and, oh my gosh. and people are like, oh wait, I, if I can't ruin this, then I'm gonna try and do this. So <laughs> we're gonna show you if how- if you forget about it, you've got yes, 12 to yes, 18 hours exactly, to remember. Exactly, exactly. So. And for some reason, people feel kneading is there's a science to it. And you know, you can't over knead bread and you can under knead bread. And so I think some people are like, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just yeah. gonna run to the store and get it. So so what are our ingredients that add up to about 50 cents here? So we have with three cups of flour. You can use bread flour or all purpose. It just kind of depends on what you have. Um, I've used both. Sometimes the bread gives it a little more air, but I've also, you know, all purpose is something I have all the time. Okay. And then we have one and a quarter teaspoon of yeast, which is a small amount. If you were to compare to a lot of other bread recipes out there, um, it's a really small amount. And, we and use, so that doesn't need to be added to water first or no, anything like no, that? No, no, so just we're just going to dump it all in there. And we use the, the instant yeast. There's different types of yeast out there, but we just use the instant yeast that so helps it um, go pretty quickly. And then just a teaspoon of salt. And as you mix, you want to mix those and together. And is that a sea salt, a kosher salt? This Does it a, matter? This is a kosher salt. You can use kosher or table. Sometimes kosher is a little bit stronger. So if you were going to use um, table salt, maybe just use a little bit more than a teaspoon. And then to that, we're going to add one and a third cups of cold water. And this is where you want to make sure it's pretty cool. Um, as if you were to add warm or hot water, that's going to speed up your yast. Um, maybe a little too quickly than you want. Just stir it all okay. together. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure yeah. I'm not ruining no, this. No, you can't ruin this. <laughs> okay. And as you're stirring, it's gonna be kind of, they call it shaggy, sticky dough. Um, it's gonna have more water than you would normally think for a bread dough. And as it sits and rests, the water kind of pulls out a little bit. Um, as you can see here, this one's been sitting uh, for about 15 hours, and you can see the air pockets have started to develop. Um, one thing with, if you think about bubbles, uh, you don't wanna move your bowls a lot. As you let it rest on your counter, um, those, those pockets can pop. So as, I think okay. as we traveled here, some of those pockets um, were popped, but you can see where it started to develop. So make sure you let the kids know this is not Play-Doh and they can't play with it. My daughter's favorite thing as she sits it is to come over and shake <laughs> it. And I go, oh no, don't touch it. So your dough is that you're about getting, right? Yeah, so it's just, it's kind of it, an interesting dough. The first few times I made it, I was like, oh, I think I'm ruining this. Like, yeah. But it's just, you can see it's just kind of, a funny dough, but as it sits, the water pulls out and it becomes this beautiful dough. So is so that all that you do for that? That's all you do. Um, you can add... The simplicity really does yes. throw you off. You can add some it's... flavors, you know, um, some people do lemon, orange, some different herbs and things like that. Um, because it sits for so long, I try not to add any cheese or meat until the second one, just because you don't want those sitting out for 12 to 18 okay. hours. Um, but you just cover that, let that sit, and the longer it sits, I've even gone up to about 24 hours. Okay. So the... And how do you know if you're kind of in a hurry and yeah. you need the bare 
I mean, it could, is this done? Could you say that's so done I can, or no? We could definitely do this. So the way you want to just look is for lots of air pockets. And so once you've seen where that comes through, then that tells you, okay, I'm, I'm in a position where I could make this into beautiful bread. Um, and so I, I've never gone past 24 hours, but um, you want to keep your room about 70 degrees, which is not too hot or too cold. That's usually a pretty common temperature. Um, sometimes when you're doing other breads, they say, okay, now put it in a warm spot and let it proof. Mm -hmm. This is pretty safe to just kind of a cool. And you don't have to cover it. Yes, you do cover it. Oh, you it. do yeah. cover it. So, okay. So, yeah, so we've, we've kept it covered check. with saran wrap um, for 12 to 18 hours. Yep. Okay. And then once that's up, what's so next? So once that, so then we'll lightly uh, flour our surface. This one. We'll do it on here. This one. Yep. <laughs> so I have to ask. No, I yes. just, you know, this is new for me. And then we'll just kind of, and see, as you can see, this is beautiful. Those are those gluten strands that you're wanting to achieve. Um, from letting it rest. It this, almost has like a string cheese yes, look, a melty yes. string cheese look. So this look. is what, this is good. This is good bread. Okay. And again, we're not gonna be kneading it, but we're just gonna mix it just a little bit. And I love these. These are called a bench scraper. Um, they're made to just kind of clean your countertop. And I just kind of mix it a few times in there. Nothing serious, like I'm not taking my aggressions out. Yes. I'm not yelling at the kids. <laughs> and then let that sit for just a few minutes. And from there, we take it and we let it sit on a parchment. And again, this is another thing, you let it rest for another two hours. And okay. so, there is a lot of waiting in this, but it's worth it. And then speed up the two hours, two and we're hours, getting and then, close to our end result. Yep, so about 35 to 40 minutes before you, um, while this is going, you throw this into a 450 degree oven. This is a La Creuset pot. You can use um, anything that's enameled, something, your, your normal cast iron is not always the best because it will stick to it. Okay. But this is um, an enamel coated Dutch oven. And what you're doing is the moisture that's in this bread is creating a second oven inside this pot. And so that's how you're gonna achieve this crusty outside. And how long do we let it cook? So we put the oven, we put this in the oven first for 450 degrees for about 40 minutes. And then take it out and then we set, and I love this because this makes it really easy. We just take the parchment and we just set it right inside. And you can just move it, your pan will be hot so you gotta be careful, just move it away from it. And then put the lid back on it and put this in there for about 30 minutes. And when you take it out, um, after it cooks for 30 minutes, you can take it out, slide the parchment out, and then put it back in with the lid off for about 15 minutes. And you end up with this I gorgeous just show you guys, bread. Look at this. That is your end result. That's it. And oh, we love it. All right, <laughs> and really quickly, you guys have some uh, great classes coming up. We do, yes, we, we've got some great classes. Um, we've got brioche bread coming. Uh, always, always our cake decorating class. There's always some fun classes up on our schedule. We love this recipe. Thank you so much. We enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you. All right. Thank you.